Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2010 action fantasy film Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. Long ago in a land far away, there once rose an empire that stretched from the steppes of China to the shores of the Mediterranean. That empire was Persia, fierce in battle, wise in victory, where the Persian sword went, order followed. The Persian king Sharaman ruled with his brother Nizam upon the principles of loyalty and brotherhood. The king had two sons named Tus and Garsiv, who gave him great joy. But in the eyes of God, the king's family wasn't yet complete, not until the day he witnessed a single act of courage from an orphan boy from the streets of Nasaf. One day, while King Saruman was on his way somewhere, a little boy named Bis inadvertently blocked the king's path. Angered by the little subject's audacity, one of Sherman's men beats up the boy. Seeing Bis being slapped, a boy named Dastan intervenes and throws an apple at the man. The Persian army chases the two boys throughout the market as King Sharman watches in amazement. Dastan evades arrest but is eventually captured. The man then proceeds to execute this dawn, but King Sharman intervenes. He is blown away by Dastan's courage and selflessness. After he learns Dastan is an orphan, Sharman takes Dastan into his family. The boy with no royal blood and the unlikeliest of places became a prince of Persia. Fifteen years passed by, Dastan and his royal-blooded foster brothers Garciv and Tus led the Persian army in an attack of Alamut. Alamut is a sacred city and even the most expansionist empires fear invading the Holy Kingdom. Tus decides to attack the city in the absence of his father after Nizam reveals that the city's peoples are selling weapons to their enemies as Garciv leads the initial assault. Dastan decides to lead a surprise attack with his childhood friend Bis to save people on both sides from being unnecessarily massacred in the confrontation. Dastan uses bamboo to climb half a tall wall that surrounds Alamut and the other half using arrows. After he reaches the top, Dastan assists his men in climbing the wall using ropes. They quickly subdue the tower's guards and unlock the eastern gates and signal Garciv and Tus. As the Persian army starts heading towards the eastern gate, Dastan notices the Alamut's army moving to fight the invaders. Dastan quickly blocks their way by setting the ground on fire. The Persian then breached the city on the horse and took over. Meanwhile, anticipating her city's defeat, Princess Tamina of Alamut hands her guard a secret item and orders him to take it to a safe place. On his way out of the town, the guard is intercepted by Dastan. The two engage in a long fight. Dastan eventually takes him out and retrieves the mysterious item, which is revealed to be a unique dagger. Alamut falls to the Persians, and Tamina is captured. Mesmerized by the princess's beauty, Tus asks her hand in marriage. She initially rejects his offer, but later agrees after learning that Dastan has seized the mysterious dagger. The Persians celebrate their victory before leaving to find concrete proof of Alamut's treachery. Tus asks Dastan to give the king the prayer robe of Alamut's regent as a celebratory gift. The proud father, Sherman, praises Dastan for acting boldly and courageously to bring victory and spare lives. Sherman takes pride in adopting Dastan, noting that his blood may not have been noble, but he is a king in spirit. After presenting the prayer robe to his father, Dastan brings Princess Tamina before him and seeks his blessing for Tus and Tamina's union. Much to Dastan's astonishment, King Sherman suggests that Dastan weds to Tamina instead. Dastan, who plunges into a hundred foes without thought, freezes with fear and embarrassment. The king makes fun of Dastan's shyness, but he suddenly starts shaking and collapses. It turns out the robe was poisoned. Prince Dastan, who presented the robe to Sherman, is quickly held as the perpetrator in chaos ensues. Dastan manages to escape the castle with Princess Tamina while Bis, his best friend, is killed trying to save them. Dastan takes Tamina with him after she offers to help him get away from the city. The Persian army chases them, but they manage to get away on a horse. Dastan tells Tamina that he didn't kill his father, and he suspects that Tus killed him to ascend to the throne. Pretending to empathize with him, Tamina gets closer to this Dastan and tries to snatch the dagger. However, Dastan catches up to her charade and pushes her away. A struggle follows, and Dastan accidentally activates the mysterious dagger. The dagger emanates an enchanting yellow light and reverses time. It is revealed the dagger has some special sand that helps it rewind time for one minute with only the holder of the dagger being aware of it. The bearer could go back in time to alter events and change time. After learning of the dagger's power, Dastan speculates that Tus must have known about the dagger. 
Tus framed Istan for their father's murder in an attempt to seize the throne and the dagger to become the most powerful ruler of Persia. The next day, Dastan insists on going to Avrat to attend his father's funeral and try to convince his uncle Nizam about Tus's evil plans. Dastan is forced to take Princess Tamina with him after she questions his manhood for abandoning a helpless woman in the middle of nowhere. Dastan and Tamina bicker throughout their journey when Tamina mocks Dastan for walking like a boastful prince. Then he reveals that he wasn't born royalty, unlike her. They eventually reached their destination and watched over King Sherman's funeral procession with delegations from all around the world participating. Tamina uses her connections to disguise themselves amongst the dignitaries. At an opportune time, Dastan covertly meets Nizam. Dastan tells him about everything, including the dagger in sand. When he proceeds to show the dagger to Nizam, he realizes that Tamina has stolen the dagger from him. Dastan then notices the burns on Nizam's hands, which indicates that he was the one who set up the murder of the king. Dastan's suspicion is confirmed when he realizes that Nizam has set up an ambush for him. A fierce chase throughout the street follows. Dastan is attacked by strings of Persian soldiers and bombarded with arrows. Dastan is also attacked by his brother Garsiv. While dodging attacks, this Darsiv tries to convince his brother that Nizam orchestrated their father's assassination, but without success, Dastan eventually subdues Garsiv and flees. Later, Nizam returns to Nisaf and meets with the newly crowned king. Nizam falsely alleges that Dastan came to Avrat to assassinate him and wants to ascend to the throne. Nizam, aware that Dastan knows he was responsible for killing King Sheriman, suggests that Dastan should be brought back to Nisaf dead. However, Tus insists on honoring the rule of law and putting Dastan on trial to send a message to his people about the king that he hopes to be. Unable to convince Tus, Nizam hires the Assassins a group of highly skilled warriors who once served as hired killers for Persian royalty. Nizam had kept the sect hidden for his own use after Sheriman had them disbanded. Meanwhile, Dastan looks for Tamina. He eventually catches up to her and takes back the dagger. He discloses his uncle's involvement in the murder of the king to Tamina. Dastan realizes that Nizam couldn't have murdered Sheriman just to rewind a few moments of time. He tells Tamina if she wants to have the dagger back, she must tell him everything about Alamut. Left with no other choice, Tamina reveals that the city of Alamut hides a massive sand glass under it, and the sand glass contains the sand that powers the dagger. Long ago, the gods sent a great sandstorm to destroy and wipe the face of the earth after seeing nothing but greed and treachery on earth. But one young girl begged the gods to give the world another chance, offering her life in exchange. Seeing the purity of her heart, the gods were reminded of man's potential for good and swept the sands into the sand glass. The dagger was given to the girl who saved mankind, making her the first guardian. The dagger blade is the only thing that can pierce the sand glass and remove the sand of time, but the dagger's handle only holds enough sand to rewind time by one minute. If one were to place the dagger in the sand glass and press the jewel button at the same time, the sand would flow endlessly and one could turn back time as far as they like. Istan speculates that Nizam intends to go back in time where he saved Sherman from being attacked by a lion. He wants to undo the act to ensure that he becomes the king of Persia. However, Tamina reveals that the sand glass is the vessel holding the sands of time which the gods conjured to punish humanity for its sins. And should the dagger of time be used to pierce the sand glass, the sands would be released and destroy the entire world. Putting aside their differences, Dastan and Tamina joined hands to protect the dagger and take it to a sanctuary, the secret guardian temple outside Alamut. Now along their journey, the pair are taken hostage by a group of merchant bandits led by Sheikh Amar and his friend Sesso. Sesso hails from the Mbaka and is a master of throwing knives. The bandits take the Dagger of Time and intend to hand over Dastan to King Tus for reward. When the bandits retire for the night, the assassin's leader unleashes a number of trained vipers on the group. However, Dastan notices the snakes and saves Sesso's life by throwing a snake in the fire. Dastan asks Sesso to hand him the dagger and uses it to rewind time foreseeing the attack. He manages to kill all the snakes single-handedly. An amazed assassin leaves in a sand dervish, but not before Dastan learns about his involvement. In the attack the next day after being promised gold as rewards, Sheik and Sasso accompany the pair to their secret sanctuary in the mountains near India. Tamina intends to steal the dagger by returning it to the stone from where it came, but in the process, Tamina would have to sacrifice herself. However, at the mountains, they run into Garcive and his men. Dastan manages to persuade his brother Garcive that he is innocent and tells him about Nizam's involvement. Garcive reveals that Nizam recommended his death to King Tusk, to which Dastan attributes to Nizam's fear of being exposed by him. 
The two brothers suddenly hear noises coming from outside. When Garcia inspects, he gets sprayed with spike knives thrown by Hassassin and collapses on the ground. As the Persian army and the bandits take on the Hassassin, Tamina heads towards the Sacred Stone, followed by Dastan. A love-struck Dastan tells her that he won't let her sacrifice herself, and the two proceed to kiss when the Hassassin leader manages to swap the dagger from Tamina knocking her unconscious in the process. As Dastan takes on the leader, a trained assassin snake devours the dagger. After seeing the dagger, the assassin flees. Dastan is saved from the last assassin by an injured Garcev, who then succumbs to his injuries, but not before asking Dastan to save the Empire. After gaining possession of the dagger, Nizam begins digging tunnels to the sand glass caves beneath Alamut. Meanwhile, Tamina and Dastan return to Alamut to reveal the truth about Nizam and the dagger Tuss. They are accompanied by Sheik and Sesso, who offer to help after learning the truth about the dagger. First, they must get the dagger, which Tamina learns is kept in the sacred temple, guarded by the Hassassins. Using Princess Tamina's help, Sesso sneaks into the temple and is immediately attacked by a spike-wielding Hassassin. A lengthy battle follows. Eventually, Sesso manages to kill the Hassassin after a well-timed throw and reaches the dagger, but realizes that he too managed to fatally wound himself with spikes. A wounded Sesso collects all of his strength and throws the dagger out of the window to Sheik and Dastan before giving in to his wounds. Nizam learns about Dastan's presence and orders his men to look for him. Sheik Amar distracts the guards by serving as a decoy while Dastan and Tamina sneak into the palace to warn Tuss. Dastan takes Tuss hostage at knife point to talk to him alone and tells him about Nizam as Tamina watches from a distance. He reveals the secret about the dagger in the sands of time beneath the streets of Alamut and Nizam's intentions to turn back time to make himself the Persian king. Tusk discards these revelations as heresies and pagan madness. Unable to convince his brother and left with no choice, Dastan tells Tusk to press the jewel in the dagger's hilt before stabbing himself to death. After Dastan collapses on the ground, Tusk activates the dagger and rewinds time by one minute. After learning the truth, when Dastan again proceeds to stab himself, Tuss stops his brother. Just as Dastan takes a sigh of relief, Nizam arrives. He slits Tuss's throat while Dastan is incapacitated by another assassin. Nizam retrieves the dagger and, before leaving, orders the assassin to finish off Dastan. After Nizam leaves, Tamina distracts them and Dastan and then neutralizes them. She learns that the assassin was one of her own people and had been a spy inside the city of Alamut. The traitor must have been the one who told Nizam about the dagger. Nizam goes to the sand glass caves beneath Alamut as Dastan and Tamina race to stop him. Tamina opens the secret gate leading to the chamber, allowing them to take a shortcut to the sand glass. However, the two soon get separated when the ground below Dastan caves. Dastan then encounters the leader of the Hassassin. An intense battle follows, the Hassassin manages to overpower Dastan and backs him up against a wall. The Hassassin snake then proceeds to bite Dastan, but Tamina grabs the snake and makes it bite the Hassassin instead. Dastan then stabs him before throwing him into the chasm. Dastan and Tamina kiss. The two then intercept Nizam. Dastan attacks him, but Nizam easily subdues him with a knife. He knocks Dastan and then Tamina over the edge of the chasm, but Dastan desperately catches her hand. Soon, Dastan's grip gets weaker and weaker. With the time running out to stop Nizam, Tamina pleads with Dastan to let her go and stop Nizam. Dastan refuses to let her die, but Tamina professes her love for him and lets go, sacrificing herself to stop Nizam. Nizam then pierces the sand glass with the dagger, but Dastan quickly pulls himself up and presses the dagger's button to open the Sands of Time container before Nizam. The sand glass slowly cracks in the sandstorm, as shown destroying Alamut. Dastan uses the dagger to turn back the time as the sand glass breaks, ending up at the point where he first held the dagger during the siege of Alamut. Dastan then reveals Nizam's evil plan to his brothers. Exposed, Nizam attempts to kill Dastan, but Dastan subdues him and tells him how ungrateful Nizam was to take the love, respect, and family he had for granted. When Dastan turns his back, Nizam proceeds to attack him, but Tuss intervenes and kills Nizam. Tuss apologizes to Princess Tamina for ransacking her city and suggests that perhaps Tamina should become Dastan's wife as a sign of goodwill. Prince Dastan gets on his knees and returns the Dagger of Time to her as a gift. As she looks at him in astonishment, Tamina talks to Dastan privately and expresses her surprise about Dastan's sudden change of heart. Dastan replies that they hardly know each other to know what's in each other's heart, but he tells her that he looks forward to the day they do. The movie ends. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.